A site can have various separate cathexis vision servers that operate independently of each other, or they can be interconnected as a centrally controlled system in a master-slave configuration where archiving and user credentials are common across the system and the entire site's resources are presented on every server. Select one of the servers on the site that will become the master and open the site tab and click the general site setup. Give the site a descriptive name. Set the offline and default access levels. The default values of one and password required will usually be fine. Set the site contact icon to set the site-wide contact details. Don't forget to click OK to store the changes when this is done. Choose New or Edit in the resulting pop-up window and complete the necessary contact details, such as name, company details, telephone details, address, passcodes, email and default contact method. Don't forget to click OK to store the changes when this is done. Leaving the default network and multicast settings will work. Next, click on the Configure Archiving button to configure site-wide archiving profiles. The important items are Allow Archives to be Exported, which allows archives or portions of it to be exported to other archive files or MP4 media format files. And Require Password Protection, which forces passwords to be used on the archives. And select the password options that your site will use. Watermarks which will appear across the video archive can be set by clicking the Configure Watermarks tab and creating a new profile and text to be displayed. These profiles can now be used site-wide when creating video archives. Returning to the Use Site Password selection, if this option is checked, then the usernames and passwords on the master will be distributed to the slave units when the slave units are connected. Once completed, click the Apply button. Continuing with the master setup, open the server setup and give the master server a unique descriptive name. Select the correct network interface and IP and click Apply. Now opening the setup on the secondary or slave unit. In the general site setup, the basic default settings can be left unchanged. In the server setup screen, ensure that the unit has a unique descriptive server name and that the correct network interface and IP address is selected. At this point, the site will have fully functioning independent servers, each with their own usernames and passwords and respective resources, if the servers are now connected together on the same IP network. And then on the unit designated to be the master, right-click on any white space in the Servers List panel. Choose New Server and enter the slave IP address. Clicking OK will prompt for administrative login credentials. After a connection is made, the server will be added to the site and a message informing of the success will be displayed. Checking the server setup screen will show the main PC as the master and the newly added server as the slave. What also happens is the user or password list on the slave is replaced with the list from the master and the resource list on all the machines are populated with the site-wide resources, not just that machine's resources. Additional slave units can be added in the same manner. Thank you for watching.